After losing veteran left tackle Dwayne Brown, the Seahawks came back into the first round and made an immediate impact, taking Charles Cross to replace him. Today, I want to dive into Charles Cross' film, analyze what he does well, what he needs to improve on, and really answer the question, could he be the next Seahawks franchise left tackle, or could he be the next big draft bust? So without further ado, let's dive into the film breakdown. Taking a look at this first play, I want to highlight one of the strengths of Charles Cross, and that's his ability in pass pro, more specifically his recovery ability in pass pro. So at the snap of the ball here, I want to focus on the defensive end's rush. He's going to speed rush upfield, trying to get Cross to overset. Once Cross is overset here, he's going to try to jump back inside and take advantage of this inside rushing lane that's starting to crease. But we see Charles Cross do a great job here, post-stepping back inside, taking away that inside rushing lane. But all this does is set up another counter move for the defensive end. Now Cross is oversetting inside, trying to shut down that inside rushing lane. He has his head over his toes, his chest is over his toes. It looks like he's in a really bad position here. But as we see, Charles Cross, he keeps his feet square. He's not leaning too far inside. He's just a little bit over his toes. He keeps his balance underneath himself. He keeps his body weight evenly distributed between his two feet and allows him to jump back outside and pick up that counter spin move. I'll just play roll from the top one more time again, but just keep an eye on the ability for Charles Cross to recover, how he's able to post back up inside, get back outside, and mirror any defensive end. There's no doubt about it, there's a lot to like in Charles Cross Pass Pro. As we jump into this next play, once again, I'm going to be highlighting his Pass Pro. More specifically here, I really want to highlight his patience as a pass protector. So the snap of the ball here, we're going to see the defensive end. He's going to try to set up this inside rush here. He's, As we see, he's attacking the inside shoulder of Cross, trying to get him to post that back inside. All this is trying to do is set up a spin move back to the outside. We see, though, Cross is forced to take that post step just to settle and protect that inside rushing lane, but he's not overcommitting. He's not throwing himself in there. He keeps his shoulders back. He keeps his hands back. He's not lunging out at the defensive end. And because he's staying patient here, he's easily able to read the defensive end trying to spin back outside. And with his shoulders back and his base underneath of him, he's able to kick right back out and pick up the spin move, keeping his quarterback clean. I'll have to play roll from the top one more time, but look how Charles Cross is patient here. He's not throwing his punch too early. He's not lunging into the defensive end. He's just sitting back and reading the defensive end like a book. There's no doubt about it. We've seen a lot to like from Cross so far. He has really good balance in his stance to recover extremely well. He's patient with edge rushers, not overcommitting, not throwing his punch early. Now I want to highlight his ability to mirror defenders. So pre-snap here, we see he's got an inside four eye, which is gonna make him take two hard post steps inside to regain that inside half leverage. This is setting up perfectly for the defensive end though, because as Charles Cross momentum is carrying him inside, it allows the defensive end to jump back outside here. But once again, we see Cross's base is evenly distributed here. He's not leaning too far inside and allows him to kick back out and pick up that outside rush here, locking down the defensive end. I'll have to play a role from the top one more time. Just keep an eye on Charles Cross' feet here. The ability to mirror that defender, he's not leaning too far one way. The weight's evenly distributed and allows him to lock down any defensive end. There's no doubt about it. We've seen a lot to like so far. Charles Cross is one of the most technically sound pass protectors in this draft. Moving on now, I want to highlight his football IQ, his ability to pick up on stunts, and overall his understanding of what the defense is trying to do. So pre-snap here, we see Bama's trying to run this tackle no stunt here. The tackle is going to slam hard inside, trying to get Cross to overset inside and allow this nose tackle to loop back outside. But keep an eye at the snap of the ball of Charles Cross' eyes and his shoulders. He's not burying himself in there. He's not burying his eyes. He's keeping his shoulders back and his head up. This allows him to easily see this looper working back over the top. And as we see, he easily passes off that inside crashing D tackle, gets back out and locks down this stunt. Well, let's play roll from the top one more time, but just keep an eye on it. He's going to work inside. He's going to pass that D tackle off, keeping his eyes up, seeing that looper work back around, easily kicking back out and protecting his quarterback. It's no secret, Cross is an elite pass protector, but heading into the draft, people were concerned about his ability to be effective in the running game. But I think he fits perfectly into the Shane Waldron scheme here, and we're going to see here on this next play. Pre-snap here, we see the office is trying to run some form of buck sweep or an outside zone style running play here, and I really just want to focus on Charles Cross' responsibility to cut off the backside three tech. And at the snap of the ball, we're going to see Cross do a great job getting across the D-tackle's face here, cutting him off, and once he reaches him, he's going to squat down here and box him out. All this is going to do is start to crease his cutback lane for the running back. We see on the front side here, we're getting a lot of lateral movement, and it's starting to crease to form this huge cutback lane. This is all due to the ability of Charles Cross being able to cut off the backside defender and allow this crease to form. The ability to cut off backside three techs in this outside zone running scheme, Shane Waldron's going to love. 
This is what's going to allow Rashad Penny to continue his tear through the NFL. We've seen Charles Cross play really well on the backside of these outside zone plays, but now let's flip it and let's look what he can do on the front side. So pre-snap here, we're going to be seeing this outside zone look here. All Charles Cross is going to be trying to do is reach this defense man and get up to the second level and secure the edge for his running back. The snap of the ball, he's going to do a really nice job here, working aggressively through the outside shoulder of the defensive end, pushing him back inside, allowing his guard to work around and reach the DN. He's then going to climb under control here, doing a really nice job to seal the second level defender, securing the edge for his running back. I'll have to play roll from the top one more time. This is a really good patience of the run game, being able to pass off that double team and work to the second level, securing the edge. Once again, Rashad Penny's breakout campaign came because of this outside zone running scheme. Being able to have that tackle that's able to come in and cut off backside three techs for cutback lanes, being able to have them secure edges and reach defensive ends, and all it's going to do is help build upon the campaign that Rashad Penny finished on last year. So we've seen a lot of the positives so far, I and mean, we've seen why Charles Cross was taken in the top 10. Now i got to flip gears here, we got to highlight some of the concerns I have for Cross and where he could possibly be a draft bus. And it's all going to be surrounding the issues of how Charles Cross handles speed rushers and wide nine techniques. So at the snap of the ball here, we're going to see Cross to close space between this wide defensive end. He's going to take a lateral kick step, not gaining any depth. This is going to put him in a really bad position because it's leaving a vulnerable edge here. This is going to allow the defense to work upfield and gain an extra step upfield while Charles Cross has gained no depth. As I let the play roll here, we see Cross try to recover, trying to get vertical now, trying to regain that depth, regain that leverage, but it's too late as we see. The defensive end beats him to the corner here, being able to flip his hips, work back downhill towards the quarterback, getting a pressure. I'll let the play roll from the top one more time, but just keep an eye on the set point of Cross. He needs to set vertical to these wide nine techniques from the start. That lateral kick step is going to give a vulnerable edge and allow him to get beat around the corner. Like I said, this is not a huge red flag. All this is about technique and really learning set points and when to take the right set. Possibly Charles Cross' biggest red flag, though, is his ability in the running game. He's coming from an air raid school that ran the ball less than 10 times a game, so that basically means he had minimal to no reps really running the ball all year long. We're going to see that in this next play here. The offense is running mid-zone here, and Charles Cross' responsibility here, all he's trying to do is crank this defensive end and run him out and expand the B-gap. At the snap of the ball, though, it is hard to deny that this play is actually looking pretty good. We see inside, the interior of the offensive line is climbing really well here, reaching the down lineman, getting to the play side linebacker. We see even on the front side, Cross is doing a decent job here, running this defensive end out, expanding the B-gap. But if we look at the hand usage by Cross, he needs to be cranking this defensive end, and to do that, he's got to extend his inside arm to not allow him to fall off back inside of that B-gap. Luckily, the running back was able to break through the shoelace tackle, but I'll let the play roll from the top one more time, but just keep an eye on this. It's the hand you should. He's got to extend the, extend the inside arm to lock that out and not allow that defender to fall back off inside. Obviously, the running back made a play here. It was still a nice six, seven-yard gain, but the NFL, with better athletes, you're possibly talking about risking out on an eight-yard gain and only getting a two-yard gain. Overall, though, we've seen a lot to like. We've seen some red flags from Charles Cross. So where do we stand here? Is Charles Cross going to be this franchise left tackle for the Seahawks? I think he will be. I think he fits extremely well into the scheme. Yes, he may not be the most sexy run blocker. He's not going to be pancaking defenders. He's not going to be a road grader, but he's going to get the job done. He's going to be able to cut off the backside three techs. He's going to be able to reach defensive ends in Shane Waldron's scheme. All it's going to come down to is getting repetition and working in the run game. He's coming from an air raid offense where they probably didn't even run the ball more than three times every practice. He has very minimal reps. So once he shows up to OTAs, shows up to training camp, and he starts getting these reps in and getting more comfortable in the running game, he's going to turn out to be a really nice addition to the Seahawks offensive line. On top of that, his pass protection is already one of the best that we've seen in the last few years. He's extremely balanced, got a lot of core strength, he eats up bull rushers, he's able to mirror any defender, he's really quick and light on his feet, he's patient picking up stunts, he's patient and reading counter moves. Overall, he's the most technically sound pass protector in the draft. Now it's all going to come down to... Are they going to be able to develop the run game aspect of him? Are they going to be able to make him get consistent with his hands to lock on, be able to use that crank technique on the outside zone running play? But overall, like I said, there's a lot to like, and Charles Cross has a strong foundation to be the franchise left tackle for the Seahawks. He fits perfectly with Shane Waldron's outside zone running scheme. He's going to be able to cut off the backside three techs. He's going to be able to reach defensive ends. He's going to be able to crank those defensive ends for mid zone. 
Charles Cross slots in perfectly into this offense, and I think without a doubt, if I had to predict, I think Charles Cross will be the franchise left tackle and the Dwayne Brown for the next 15 years for the Seahawks. But that'll do it for the film breakdown. Let me know your guys' thoughts on the draft so far. Were you a fan of the Charles Cross pick? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think he'll be the franchise guy for the Seahawks moving forward to protect Drew Locke or whoever whoever their next quarterback may be? Let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.